Hey guys, welcome back. We're I'm gonna go ahead and do a demo of how to actually um, maybe solder on some of the components. Um, I don't think I'm gonna completely complete this one. I think I'll let you guys kind of go ahead and do that. But this is kind of the last piece that you need is to uh, be able to solder some of your components on. So I'll give you kind of a brief rundown of how to solder. Well, what you're going to need, my stuff is a mess here, you need a good soldering iron. Um, this is a little weller that I got. It's not too bad. And there actually is a difference um, in a good soldering iron versus a, a little cheapy. I think, well, I don't have it out, but I used to have kind of a little cheapy one. Um, and I went ahead and upgraded this. These aren't too bad. They're um, You can find them on sale and stuff. They're a little over they're $100. I think this model might be even cheaper um, since it's the analog dial one doesn't have the cool digital face to it. Um, you can find these for yeah around 100 bucks or so. They're not too terrible. Um, you also want to use a good, um, if you're using a, a style like that, well really any style, is a good tip tinner. I'll take the top off of this so you can see it tip tinner what this does is it tins the tip because a lot of times the tip will come pre-tinned but as you uh, wipe it off and whatnot you'll expose the copper which then the copper can oxidize on the tip and then it'll cause uh, the heat not to transfer properly so it's good to roll it in some tip tinner and all it is is just this kind of hard stuff that melts when you when you put it in there and it's got uh, the uh, oh like this one is the ROHS stuff so it's the no lead uh, kind and it's got the, the the different alloys and metals and stuff in it and then you can roll your tip in there which I'll show you shortly but um, and then you have I have a few different tips these are just good ones to keep around Let's see if I can bring it over here in the light um, this one right here these are these are called screwdrivers if you know I don't know if you can see that these are pretty old I'm gonna have to replace them see how it's flat See, it's flat on one side, you know, it's not just round. See how it's kind of flat and tapered? That helps for um, wide components. Uh, you, can, you can get the heat to flow across a lot easier with that. Um, then you can get like a, uh, one of the ones that's kind of a point. If you look at it, this one isn't tapered. I don't know if you can see that. I'll try to get where the light hits it. If you see that, it's not tapered at all. It just comes to a point. That one's a good one, and then um, a little bit bigger of a of a screwdriver, flat blade screwdriver is what they call it, since it looks like a flat blade. See how now you can really see it. See how it's flat. So those those are good ones to have. And the one that I'm using right now for t smaller components is one that's really sharp. You know, that's that's kind of a really sharp point on it. And like I said, these are really dirty. I'm gonna have to replace these here for too long. You also want to have a good sponge that you want to wet, and I'll show you why you want to have it wet. You have it wet so when you roll the, the iron in it, you'll take the iron and you'll kind of wipe it in there, and it'll wipe off any excess uh, solder that gets stuck to the tip. Um, you also want to have around some solder braid. It's called desoldering braid. Now this is just um, some cheapy kind that you can, that you can buy. Um, this kind is just literally copper braid. I don't know if you can see that real well try to get it in the light but it's basically braided copper wire essentially um, this is the cheaper kind you can get better ones they are more expensive but the better ones have flux on them which flux is basically a, a heat transferring agent that's on it that helps heat go into it quicker and what this will do is when you set it on top of solder basically you'll put it on top let's say you're wanting to remove something or you 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 cry you solder over two pins or something on accident you'll lay this on top of the the where the solder that you want to get off is and you'll touch the iron to it and just kind of twist the iron around and it'll actually the heat will go through it and the copper being a better conductor than the the tin tin alloyed stuff that's on the chips and components and stuff it'll actually suck the solder up into it the solder will actually wick up into it and uh, and that's that's for helping in uh, removing. That's why it's called desoldering uh, braid. But like I said, there's many different kinds. Also, it's good to have. Some people use solder suckers, um, desoldering irons for through hole parts, stuff that's through hole. Um, I have one of these. This is a a desoldering. I guess kind of gun like contraption. This is one of the cheapies, but I mean it works. The main thing is you want it to be. Let's see, turn around. 45 watt at least you know something that's pretty high because you want it to get fairly hot and what this does is if you have a through hole part and if you can see that there's a hole in this if there's a through hole part you set it on the through hole part that you want to pull in this this whole thing gets hot it's just like a soldering iron this whole thing gets hot so don't touch it I've, I've got it off right now so but 
it gets really hot and it'll sit on there and it melts the solder and then what you do is you squeeze this little bulb and you set it on there and when you see the solder melt you go like that. I don't know if you can hear that. I don't know if you can hear that. But um, that's what it does. It actually, and then it sucks it up. And you suck that little bulb. So you set it on it and then you go, and it'll suck the solder up into it. And then every now and then you got to clean the tip out. You know, you got to take and uh, that's why it's uh, a hex head on it. You got to take and unscrew it and then kind of clean it out because the solder will build up in there. And then clean it out every now and then. But still, it's a good little tool. It's usually fairly cheap. They're like 20 bucks or something. 15, 20 bucks. They're not expensive. Um, but that's what you got. And then another thing that you want to have that's a good deal, good deal to have once I find them. Oh, there they are. Is a good pair of really fine pointed tweezers. Okay, I got these from a local uh, jewelry supply shop that's that's in town. Um, I know there's a few other places like HMCElectronics.com will sell different ones. These they even have the ones that are bent, um, which I kind of like better. I'm thinking about getting a pair of those. But anyway, you um, you want a good pair of really you know like needlepoint almost really fine point tweezers to be able to hold some of the tiny components, especially if you're doing surface mount stuff. So you want a good pair of those. Um, Let's see, um, for surface mount stuff, uh, you don't have to buy this, but it sure makes your life easier. But I have this contraption. What this thing is, is this is called a hot air rework station. What it does is, um, you turn if you turn it on, I don't know if you can hear that, but what that is, is that basically you've got a air setting, how hard the air blows, and you've got a heat setting of how hot it gets, and that's what what this is, is it's heating up to about 300 and some odd degrees Celsius, 393. Now that doesn't need to be that hot um, for some stuff. About around 300 or so is usually around what I use somewhere in there. And what you do is you have this little pencil. This is also called a hot air pencil too. And what it does is it blows really hot air out through this little pencil top thing. And you can use that to actually heat up the entire component and melt the uh, solder all the way around so that way you can pull the component off so for example I'm gonna shut this off so it didn't get too hot but uh, for example like if you had a little tiny chip like this I don't know if you can see that Let's see if I can get some zoom action going on here you have a little teeny tiny chip like this well to try to get all the solder wicked up off of there you can probably only wick up the top but the, the pins will still be stuck to the pads same with there because you can't get the solder off of the complete bottom so what you can do is you can basically take that hot air pencil and take and heat up this entire component and then take a you know your good pair of tweezers or whatever and uh, let's see if I spread them out you can actually grab a hold of the component kinda all over the place here sorry about that sorry about the shaking uh, and then just the whole component off. You just heat the whole thing up and then pop it right off. It's real, it's real pretty simple. So um, anyway, well, here let's zoom back out so we're not so crazy here. So anyway, we'll uh, we'll go ahead and uh, get started here. I'm going to go ahead and flip on my uh, flip on my soldering iron. Okay, and then while that heats up, I'm going to set up the camera and everything. And uh, what we'll do, what I'll be doing is I'll be uh, rolling this in the wick to tin the end of it and uh, we'll put on a couple components just so you guys can see how it's done. 